the fuck you want. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 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 30 seconds remaining. Wait, you know what you say? I doubt you will stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school. On the other side of the ocean. Oh, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. Oh, I forgot to light a candle. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin, YouTube, all of the places where fine podcasts are sold. Before I bring in our fabulous guest, uh, I have to announce a couple of comedy shows. I will be in New Jersey Saturday, July 8th. That's coming up, guys. That's pretty close. Uh, it's just, what, the week after next? Good God. The summer's flying by. I hate it. Yeah, this is, wow, basically next Saturday, July 8th. I'll be at Tiff's Ale House in Morris Plains with my good friend Keanu Thompson. It's going to be so hilarious. Come see us. Do stand up. Get your tickets now. Then I'll be in Houston for Anime Matsuri in August. Uh, that convention is Thursday, August 10th through Sunday the 13th. I will be there. There will be a Simpcast panel booth or at least a Chrissy Mayer booth. I'll be there, though. And I'm figuring out who will also be there, too. It's a little bit of a shit show, but I'm told it's very fun at Anime Matsuri. Plus, I'm headlining that same weekend Friday, August 11th at the Secret Group in Houston. So if you know you're going to be in town, get your tickets now. Go to chrissymayer.com. Get your tickets for the Secret Group on August 11th. And we'll have some lols. And we'll hang. And we'll do cosplay. Maybe I'll do my April O'Neil or my Little Mermaid cosplay. I'm really torn between the two. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'll see you guys there. Okay. So excited for this guest. She is absolutely, do I want to say viral sensation? I might, I might want to say viral sensation. She, she, you might have seen her on the whatever podcast. You may have seen her on Tim cast. Uh, you may uh, have seen her on her show, pop culture crisis. Um, you maybe had a dream about, uh, Elsa and maybe you envisioned her cause she like, if she was going to like if someone's going to play her in a movie, I think it would like a cartoon character. All right. Um, uh, this intro is off the rails. Uh, I'm so excited that she's here with me today. Mary Morgan. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hi. Happy to be here. Happy that to that intro you. really flattered me. Oh my God. I'm like, I remember the first time I saw you before I put two and two together, I saw you on the whatever podcast. And I, before I knew your name, I just was calling you ice princess because I was just like, your look is very stunning. It's like very, like you could be in a Tim Burton movie. Um, yeah, that's definitely the vibe I'm going for. Thank you. <laughs> like, I feel like you could have been in Edward Scissorhands. In, in oh, Edward like, Scissorhands, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a vibe. Loves it. It's a vibe. How, okay, with with my first time guests, we always like to get into the the origin story um, because if, if no one's, you know, I, I always like to know about like the process, um, whether people are raised one way or another or their, their politics changed or for a lot of people, it's like the pandemic or they got red pilled or somebody broke their heart or they, they almost <laughs> died. <laughs> um, how did you get from um, little Mary Morgan to pop culture crisis, Mary Morgan? Okay. Origin story. That's a little bit intimidating. I don't know how far back you want me to go. Oh, no. um, <laughs> the womb. I, I never had any near death experiences um, but yeah, little Mary, I was raised Catholic, very traditional values, always have been red pilled. I was born this way. I was born in it. 
Um, and I started at Timcast in April last year, so it hasn't actually been that long. And before that, I had zero prior experience doing like podcasts or anything on camera whatsoever. But uh, clearly, it's gone well. I wouldn't call myself a viral sensation, but like if you want to call me that, that's nice. Um, and I do a show there called Pop Culture Crisis, where we talk about pop culture. We talk about celebrities. We dunk on them. We review movies. We uh, just generally talk about like Hollywood and the entertainment industry. And I think that's like way more fun than talking about politics every night. Like that, that would make me suicidal. Um, <laughs> uh, I also have like, you know, dabbled in talking about uh, I guess, I don't know what to call it now. Like it used to be called red pill. It used to be called like the manosphere. But now um, we've reached like a boiling point of like a battle of the sexes. Um, just talking about like only fans and like the state of modern feminism and dating culture, which is obviously a hellscape now. So that's how I ended up on the whatever podcast and some clips from my appearances there went pretty viral. Um, I think that happened just because they're not used to hearing uh, criticism from girls their own age on that podcast. I mean, for anyone watching who's unfamiliar with it, it they basically get a round table of a bunch of either OnlyFans girls or just like liberal college girls from the area. And they, they actually have like nine OnlyFans girls on their table like right now as we speak, which is crazy. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Fit so many in in the I guess they're small. They can cram them in. And yeah, it's it's confusing that like they know they're going on this show and they're going to get like dunked on and humiliated and made fun of in the chat. But they do it because they're so like desperate for attention, no matter if it's positive or negative. But um, yeah, you pulled up my my best of compilation. I, I, I didn't know this, this clip, but I love it. Yeah, this is on a YouTube channel called Spaghetti Warrior 66 because I just YouTube searched for oh, they're, they're your name. Oh, they're regular in my, uh, in my chat on pop culture. That's fun. Oh my God. Yeah, this is like an homage. Um, This is this is great. This is 15 minutes of. Do you want to just... like react to some of the moments or, or. Yes. Oh my God. Let's go through. Cause like walk us through. So you, you, you respond to an ad. Um, They're looking to sort of like book guests for this, this show. They respond to you right away. Did they know who you were? They must have, they must've known. Who I'm you not were. sure. I, I just went in Instagram DMS and was like, Hey, I have a unique perspective to offer on the show because I'm Catholic and, uh, I believe in like abstinence until marriage. And I think that's like wow. a point of view that's rarely on the show. Um, and then, yeah, I got a response in the middle of the night, like pretty quickly. And this was like, I think back in April that I first went on. And then since then I've done two other appearances, Oh, the wow. last two were a little more recent than that. Um, and one of them was the one that Destiny went on with his uh, wife, Melina, I think that's her name. Yeah. They were on there because they're talking about like polyamory and like having an open marriage, which is. Uh, I don't know unique. that that's possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think those two, they look like they're pulling it off again. You can never really know what's inside somebody else's relationship and you can. Anybody can say whatever they need to say to make it seem like, oh, it's working out beautifully. But I just uh, I just think it's a ticking time bomb. And like, Mary, you are exactly, I think, what the world needs more of right now, because I talk about this all the time with like women and men of like varying ages. But like uh, I, I pray that more women like you will get on the scene and and uh, be vocal because there has just been I actually the boomers were brainwashed by feminism in a big way. Millennials, for sure, uh, brainwashed by feminism. And I think Gen Z is the first generation starting to kind of like wake up from it and be and 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 actually be able to detach themselves in a way like, oh, the, these behaviors and what's being pushed as part of the culture is is actually not in our best interest. And it's hard for, for I think, millennials and boomers to step back and and be real and honest about it because we've invested so much time and money like into our 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 bachelor's degree into our masters into you know getting one two divorces um you know 
if you're already at a point where you've had a hundred, it's up to the hundred guys, it's going to be very hard for you to pull back and be like, that actually wasn't the best course of action. So I think that's why it's so important for like younger women like yourself to be outspoken about this because it's just, we've had multiple generations just basically telling women like, yeah, it's cool to sleep with as many guys as possible. You're not going to have feelings about it. You, you can, you can sleep around like a man. You can pursue a job like a man and, and you won't, you'll be better off for it. And it's bullshit because we're just not, well, a lot of us are not wired to be fulfilled from that course of action. Yeah. I don't know if I would say that Gen Z is waking up to it. I guess we're just more polarized. And I don't think that any of those boomers or Gen X or even millennials would have thought it would end up that the like summer of love sexual revolution would end up causing future generations to then be having less sex than any prior yeah. generation. Like You're so right about not that. Right it's, reasons, yeah. Not because they have moral convictions about sex or because they believe that it's something uh, sacred that they should share with someone they love. It's because they're less socially connected also. So Gen Z is 100%. not just having less sex. They're also like in less meaningful relationships and they're socializing less. They go out less. They get their driver's licenses later than prior generations do. They yeah. are actually just retreating from relationships and no one back in the 60s would have predicted that this was the conclusion of where we'd end up at from the sexual revolution. Yeah, there was no other option but to be, you know, face to face back then. No one could have foreseen, uh, you know, cell phones and social media back then. All right. All right. The chat is very anxious for me to play the clip. OK, here we go. We'll, we'll, sort okay, of, okay. Um, we'll blow through it and hopefully... I think there were a lot of fantastic moments in here. So we'll do you do it. OnlyFans. How much do you make, Nicolette? It's like kind of tacky to say like exactly <laughs> how much money you make. I mean, it's, it's tacky not... to be on OnlyFans in the first place. Ah! <laughs> you love their reaction too. I love like how love they weren't expecting that at all. Look at their face. I love how <laughs> this is what the you're what the world needs more of because I just I feel like society, uh, the only way to be confident as a woman for many years seems like to just sleep around. Like that's th Those are at least the messages that I got growing up. Like, don't be feminine, uh, be have a lot of sex, be detached from it. And uh, basically, that's not cool to kind of save yourself for someone you actually like. You know, everyone watches porn, so why? That's not true either. Well, a lot of know? people do, and I feel like it doesn't really matter, you know, some so if everybody turns growing up, around a lot of generalities, of there, um, there's plenty of people in really healthy, really good relationships with children, with their and, mothers who, yeah, and did they do, and they adult film and yeah. But your kids, it is what can't. it is. If they find it, they find it. I'm not gonna like. I'm obviously uh, gonna try to make sure they don't. But if I think a lot of these women who, um, and I'm friends with a lot of women who do porn and do OnlyFans, and. And I feel like there's a very small percentage of women who are built who have like the constitution to like be great at it. And 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 I feel like a lot of them though, it's like a piece of their soul gets taken out. And oh yeah, this girl, that girl who's talking with the red hair, she literally admitted that doing porn made her feel like she was losing a part of herself every time uh, that she did it. And she said this out loud while smiling. And then she was like, well, yeah, like at first doing porn, it just like, it kind of made me feel like I was losing a part, part of myself. And like, you know, then I just kind of like ignored that feeling and I kept going and then it was fine. Uh, like, and, and she said this like totally straight faced and all of the girls around the table heard it too. But she seems very I, resigned to it. Even the way she said, well, yeah. everyone watches porn. So it's like, if you can't beat them, join them. And I know, I definitely know that right. feeling. Cause like, uh, there, I just feel like there's a large group of women who feel like, yeah, it's it's inevitable. Like every guy you'll ever be with is going to be at least moderately to severely addicted to porn. And and it's just kind of like this feeling of it's not like you can request a guy not to watch porn or watch less porn. It's like it's inevitable. So just get basically get on board with it. She just seems very resigned to the fact that. Yeah, but it says a lot about the kind of guys that they're surrounding themselves with. And there's a part of this compilation, I think, that uh, the girl, the blonde girl on the corner, 
she says like i feel like a lot of guys would be like turned off by that though if i said i wasn't going to have sex with them until right. marriage or if i delayed having sex with them until a certain point in the relationship and i was like i i think that says more about the guys that you're dating than anything it, it says more about them than you if they're not willing to wait and also any guy who is serious looking for a relationship or who, who's marriage minded he would consider like one year or two years of waiting nothing compared to a lifetime of commitment with you right and a lot of people make make fun of or um dunk on this podcast a lot because oh it's just it's just dumb women who make themselves look bad and they make them look bad but i think every so often like you do get nice nuggets of of honesty and vulnerability out of these women and it is a good insight into seeing like where feminism like where culture has brought us in terms of like the this is how these women actually feel and they just it, it's like a confidence crisis like a lot of women think the only thing they have of value is like is their sexuality and if you grow up around porn all the time and you look at the women like who get the most likes or the most attention or or whatever uh you go oh i have to act like that to be high value like i I, you know what I mean? Like all women kind of want attention and to be looked at, but just for different reasons, you know, everyone wants to be noticed and be special men too. Um, but it's like, it's just, it's really interesting because it, a lot of them truly feel like this is the only, this is the only way I can bring value. And this is the only way I'll get uh, noticed. Right. And a lot of them cloak that with like, oh, I'm just doing OnlyFans because it's great money. And for some of them, that's true. If they're in like the top one or 0.1 or 0.01% of OnlyFans, they are making a lot of money, but none of that is worth the, the cost to your soul, your relationships and your future or your future family if you end up having one. Yeah, it's really and great money now. I, like I think that they're makes six figures. That they're after yeah. the yeah they're after they they claim they're after the money even if they get it um it, it's it, like having material comforts or monetary security is just nothing compared to having actual emotional security and i think a lot of them are chasing after that dopamine rush of like getting male attention but will cloak that with like oh no i'm just like using them like they're they're my simps and i'm in control but in reality they're the ones getting used and they're not able to see uh, past, you know, the next couple years of their life. They're not able. They may want kids, but they're not at all thinking like how their kids will experience um, finding their content. You know, they they may want to eventually find a husband and get married, but they're not thinking about how the kind of guy they want to end up with will experience, you know, will perceive them in this kind of work or how uh, it will change the type of men who pursue them or don't pursue them. And it, it's just, they're not seeing it because they're like, we're all young and stupid, but like, it's, it's sad to, to see them like, okay, you're pursuing this momentary big money job uh, at the cost of maybe things that are going to be more important to you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this. I was talking about this today on Pop Culture Crisis. There was this OnlyFans model named L. Brooke who went on Pierce Morgan Uncensored. And he essentially, he, he didn't even really criticize her that harshly. He was just saying the same thing you're saying, like, well, what if you want to have kids someday and they end up getting bullied when they're showed, shown this content that you were in, you were doing porn. And she ended up... Uh, making her like writing an article about it and saying that this question is misogynistic and it's just aimed mm -hmm. at antagonizing sex workers. But just because one person asked you that in bad faith doesn't mean that everyone asking you that question is asking in bad faith. It's a genuine concern. And this girl at 25, although she's claiming now that she doesn't want kids or she's you know just trying to live her own life and be single and live for herself, in the future that obviously could change. Um, yeah. That, but that, like, even that concern, I think, is like totally periphery to, like, I'm just concerned about the effects on this individual right now. Like, forget about 10, 20, or 30 years from now. This is soul crushing to do in the moment, regardless of the the pros that you're seeing in it now. The cons far outweigh them, and I think a lot of people are too uh cowardly honestly they don't have the moral courage to 
come right out and say, like, I find this uh, online prostitution gig viscerally disgusting. Like, I, I think that we all like kind of feel that in our conscience because we all know what's right and wrong. And if you have a moral problem with people do doing OnlyFans, uh, whether it's male or, males or females, it's not really a sex issue, um, then come right out and say that you have a moral problem with it instead of bringing up all of these peripheral uh, pragmatic concerns. Like if an 18 year old girl who's like right out of high school or a girl going right out of college is thinking of making an OnlyFans, your response to that shouldn't be, oh, well, um, you're probably not going to make that much money off of it. You're probably going to make the average, which is about $200 a month. She's not looking for the money. She's looking for affirmation and approval and believes that her sexuality is all she has to offer or put on the table. So you need to you know, affirm her that she has an identity outside of that instead of just focusing on the the material concerns. It's not about the money for her, even if she claims that it is. Right. And if you're uh, like the type of girl who loves social media anyway, and you're on it and you're all about like perfecting your pictures anyway, and maybe you are filtering or maybe you're airbrushing face tuning and you're into just like maybe there is a, an artistic element to that too and if you add that into oh i can make a living off this i feel like it has all of the dopamine hit of gambling but you get like you win every time because it's like the attention and the rush but you're like oh and i'm getting paid and uh you just i think you just think that that's gonna you're gonna be a one of those you know top earners and that it, and that it'll last well, yeah, I mean, beauty fades. That's just a fact of life. As you age, your value in that respect is going to get lower and lower. And you're going to start thinking about what you really value in life. And the loneliness is going to set in. And that that cost for them is not something that I'm going to revel in. I'm not going to relish seeing them um, reach that stage of life where, you know, time is going to punish them. I don't I'm not that disillusioned yet. And I think that they need to be offered an off ramp from this right. lifestyle. And you can't just tell them that they're worthless after doing OnlyFans. Like this is still a person, and you know, right? Any, yeah, any you be forced to wear, um, you know, an A on your chest for the rest of your life. Like yeah. you, yeah. I I, I didn't I, want to come off on this on whatever or any any time. I don't want to come off like I'm moralizing just for the sake of it just to make them feel bad about themselves i didn't want to come off as someone who's just shaming them so that i can feel better about myself and put myself on a pedestal like i right. genuinely wanted to reach them and i hope i did i'm not sure but it, right. it just seems like nobody is pushing back on this stuff i'm gonna click through this a little more whatever you know so if everyone jumps they would off find cliff, it by their peers well, sending it to though. them that's really different do you oh, realize that they would they would find the this by other kids sending it to them? Well, honestly, like oh, anything you do hand, can be yeah. used against you. You're anything that's such a cope. <laughs> and like us be, people are gonna right bully regardless. And you you don't think that <laughs> one is worse than the other? Exactly. You don't think that you know being on a podcast and talking about dating culture is like a little less embarrassing for a kid than their mother sucking dick on camera. <laughs> Really? I, mean, I guess. But we and we're definitely in the next ten years going to start hearing from just like we're starting to hear from detransitioners more. We're going to start hearing from kids whose parents, you know, did OnlyFans, did porn, and we're time will tell the effect it'll have on them. Yeah, I mean, it's already happening, but it's going to accelerate. I, I, I was just imagining that. Like, are my kids in the future going to get bullied by other kids pulling up clips of me on the whatever podcast? <laughs> Like, be real. Your mom? Are they pulling up like videos of of me from ten years prior uh, on pop culture crisis, being like, "Haha, look, your mom was a podcaster." Like, it was just such a ridiculous rebuttal. I I never understood that one. Yeah, that's true. I think about that too. Like you could, you could totally take clips where I'm describing, uh, like a, a threesome that was not worth it. That was like, you know what I mean? Like just where, but it's like a cautionary tale and anything can be clipped, but I would hope that anything, if I have a kid and they end up finding something online, I'll be able to like explain it to them be like, look, your mom was just trying to make people laugh and warn people against, uh, unsatisfying sexual decisions. <laughs>
Uh, all right, I'll keep playing this. But there like, are degrees to this. It is. Yeah, there is objective. Like people should just be taught to not bully. And I mean, obviously, you can't. Bully Bullying is like a bull. natural really socialization tactic that is never going common. to be eradicated. Facts. Kids need to be bullied so they don't end up being furries when they grow up. What the fuck? I would have skipped this girl because this girl was so fascinating to me. She seems like a a cartoon. Um, And every time she spoke, it it was like she was saying um, like a catchphrase or or like somebody had a soundboard. But it was just. Yeah, yeah. I'll get into like my interactions with her that happened off camera after we react to this Ooh, ooh, okay okay let me uh go to the start from when she uh da, 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 let's see okay. da, da, da. That, that's the other <laughs> that's the other look one. at your face okay Very regular normal. regular normal. person because i'm so not normal i need someone to equalize me if they're crazy Balancing. and i'm crazy it just doesn't work so yeah how are you crazy i like that he asked her what what do you mean by crazy because i think uh, a lot of women throw that around. Just like saying being crazy makes you interesting because they, they want to be like the hot, crazy matrix. You know, <laughs> they want to be yeah, the one yeah. that's so hot that makes their crazy worth it. And I like that the host was like, can you break down? Like, what exactly do you mean by crazy? And she's like, oh, I'm just sexually dominant. That doesn't make you crazy. I'm dominant. Yeah, I, I think she was just kind of floundering. Like you and want looking to daddy. Your daddy. Uh-huh. Whoa, wait, show the tattoo to the, the camera right I look, here. I watch okay, her so and I'm like, dad- this woman is not used to like sitting and talking for an hour because she looks to be like, I don't know, maybe not older than 25. And she's obviously a content creator. She's not used to expressing herself in more than like 15 to 30 second sound bites. That's why like she has her her catchphrases and her cute um like her cute poses, but like it's it's very interesting. It's like watching AI or a robot. Like it's um she's like a soundboard. It's like that's why you, you were like I but it, I don't feel like this is the real authentic you. Like where where's your personality? And yeah, and, and like, I did get to like uh, interact with her off camera and really get a sense of of her actual personality. And it, from the time before the show to when we started recording. It was like she flipped a switch and instantly started the persona. And she was like, no, this is the real me. And then after the show, um, I ended up uh, going to in and out with her and some of the other people that were on the show um, and also her her camera guy. And I, I actually like went with her in her like sports car, whatever she like bought from her OnlyFans money. And she told us like, yeah, I dropped out of school. I was planning on being a dental hygienist. And she was talking about like all of the stuff that she was doing in her career beforehand. Um, and it, it just was really sad to me because she's clearly way smarter than she uh, projects to be, you know, and mm. had so much potential and has this like uh, problem solving and like entrepreneurial skill set. And it's oh, yeah. being used. Yeah obviously. Um, and I was just like, wow, you're really not, um, I didn't say this out loud, but what I was thinking is like, you're just so like far off from like who you were created to be. And you're like, actually a, like a really cool person. And nobody gets to see that because you're using nakedness to hide yourself. Basically. I think a lot of women, it, whether they're doing porn or not, like they use their bodies and like revealing their their bodies to hide who they really are because they're afraid of vulnerability and true uh, intimacy and like people knowing the real them. Yeah, like I and I've only I, been listening to a few clips of her. I, w- I was like, I would love to see the version of her. Um, what does that look like when it's not just through the little lens like you're looking at her through? You know how you look through a straw? And you're like, okay, it's like the straw is like sexuality and like, th- and you look through the straw and this person is what you see. It's like, I would love to see the version of her that like, wasn't almost through culture. I'm sure. I mean, she's made all these decisions. She's, she's a grown person. She, every decision she's made in her whole adult life has brought her to this point. But like, she didn't feel like her sexuality was her most valuable commodity. Like again she's very artistic she's got entrepreneurial skills like she brought her own cameraman like she's very aesthetically like she knows what looks good she knows the angles everything but how else could have those skills been manifested um if she didn't feel like well i gotta go with the sex angle 
It is a little sad for that reason. Daddy. I'm daddy. I have girls with strap-ons. This is what makes me more dominant. I would pick a guy. You can tell that she she is used to getting a reaction. Like she say she'll say these things and she's used to like guys being like, oh wow. Like getting so and when she doesn't get that reaction that she's used to, you can see her being like, Oh god, what else? What else? What can I throw out here? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Yes, that was, yes, was yes, yes. This is a lot. Milk and shake. like if I may interject, <laughs> please do. Please. I drink it up. <laughs> This uh, thing kind of feels inauthentic oh, and like ah. put on. I actually get that uh, a lot. Like, like I feel like Tina Fey right now. Like, you can stop with the sexy mm -hmm. baby act. Like, well, like not. But I know you're not going your, to. Like, I just idea. okay. What? What was going on with this blonde girl? Because I feel like, and she reminds me of what's her face from Ten Things I Hate About You. Who does she? Julia Stiles. Oh she's yeah, been, yeah. She's like a less. I don't know. Uh, this girl ended up getting kicked out of the studio basically because she could not stop interjecting and interrupting in a conversation when I was trying to engage uh, this girl on the side. Um, she basically said like, I'm bored. Do you want to go get Chipotle? And then mm -hmm. we were like, you're bored. You can leave. Like you chose to be here. You were booked for a dating podcast and that's what we're talking about. And she, uh, she was really like horrified that we were there to ask uh, women questions about their dating life and like the fact that they do OnlyFans and stuff like that. And she's just like shocked and in awe that we like had criticisms or questions or concerns to raise about it on a podcast that's about dating like if you're on a dating podcast i'm sorry uh, if you didn't realize this but your dating life is on the table for discussion right and then the later in this yeah later in this clip she literally admitted that i was right she was like yeah mary, mary has a point there um like you brought all these women on to explain themselves and i'm like complaining that we're being asked to explain ourselves Maybe there, I should go. We were like, I yeah, you're right. Women, you there's something I wish women could learn. And I didn't fully learn this, I think, until I met my husband. Ooh, my husband. I've never said it like that. But um, I, I think women would do well to not confuse criticism um, for uh, being like it's a fight. Like I think a lot of women and sometimes leftists uh, uh, confuse just ask someone asking for clarification or being like, can you explain yourself or someone, a, a critique of you as an attack? And I think there's a lot of confusion. Like a lot of these women were, were especially this blonde girl, uh, like asking you to clarify your point or just having a, like a banter, like that's some sort of attack. And I, and I just feel like somewhere along the line, like dude, a lot of these women haven't learned, like, uh, I don't know if it's a lack of communication skills or they just, or they're in circles where they never have to explain themselves uh, or their point. Yeah, it's well, they're in fake friend circles where all of these females are affirming every bad decision that they make in their dating life or their personal life. And I'm sorry, that's not real friendship. You're If you had real friends, they would be pushing back on these decisions that you're making. Yeah. No. What did you say? Finish first. Well, yeah, she's I, crazy I insecure, this blonde girl. I think you're going to meet people in the world that are just going to not fit your idea of and expectations of like what people are going to say. And oh. It's not that oh, it's unexpected. So, I expected thing all is, of this. It's I just, feel so bad for her. Like she's so not comfortable in her own skin. Inauthentic. Oh, yeah. She was like, it, you can't really see it in the video, but she was like, I'm saying like, speaking. she was like, feels like trembling, a, a hyper sexualized persona wow, which is that you exactly put on. what I am. And it's you're not, not a really persona, letting like, you know what it is it's because like she's having a response of someone who's being attacked. And and a lot of people have grown up in a I don't know. If, I don't know if the social media, or the Internet's to blame, but like having a difference of opinion is they equate it to being attacked which is why you'll see sometimes people will be shaking or it's like nobody's hurting you nobody's like we're just having a conversation our, here it's our generation is kind of starved for um a voice of accountability uh, i think that a lot of women in our generation and the millennials are told that like men are the problem they should you know throw vitriol at men and the problems in modern dating are all their fault and 
we're not looking at like ways that we could improve this situation. And if I, I was listening to this really great episode. It was a uh, Theo Vaughn and Roseanne. I was listening to it like just before we started. And I mean, I could not love Roseanne anymore. And as I'm listening to her speak, I was like, oh, my God, like this is what I'm missing in my life because uh, my mom died like five years ago. And just listening to like this, like sassy, hilarious woman in her 70s, like she's so wise. She's so funny. It just made me realize like, oh, my God, I really miss my mom. But at the same time, like I love listening to Roseanne and Roseanne was talking about like how feminism has screwed over women. And she was saying like, feminism has convinced women that you don't need men. It's like, yes, you do need men because <laughs> you're hysterical for half the month. And men are like the calm, stoic, like their energy, they're, they're more even keeled throughout the month than women are. And men need to be the one to like throw down the discipline. Like if you have kids, like women can't do that. And I'm like, yes, all problems are because like women think they don't need men and are society is like so feminized because people equate criticism with attack and it's uh yeah I, I think our society is very toxically feminine right now there's a like a very toxic dynamic that sometimes manifests on on the whatever podcast where one side of the table is all of these like only fans girls or just like liberal feminist college girls and then the other side of the table is like these manosphere red pill type of guys and they're just like butting heads and expressing the extremes of both ends of the spectrum. And, and the reason that I wanted to go on there is like offer a little bit of nuance and also um, help them understand that like there are girls your age who are, uh, you know, they have a different perspective. And like I understand 100% their frustrations with the, the male population. And I share a lot of them, but the difference is you don't need to respond in kind and you don't need to opt out entirely from trying your, like to be a good example. Like the, these girls, especially the, the two on the end there, they were like 18 years old or like 19. And wow. I'm sure all of their experience with guys has been negative. And they just will paint the whole male population with that brush and decide like, I guess this is it. I guess this is all that I can hope for. Um, but like, they don't realize that they're deserving of such better treatment and that they have inherent value. And it goes so much beyond just their sexuality, their sex appeal. And that's like, they are obviously like beautiful girls and that's uh, something they should use to their best advantage in life but it's not all you have to offer and you're not going to have that forever. Yeah. I liked your approach of like going in here uh, and thinking, I want to try to help these women. Cause I'm sure it would be very easy for you to be like condescending. And like, I, I feel like one side of the table might be a little bit older, wiser, maybe smarter than one other side of the table. Not saying that these women are dumb or whatever, but I've noticed with a lot of the, whatever podcast clips, it seems like, what you're describing the red pilled men that are on the other side it's not i don't think it, it seems a lot like the conversation isn't them trying to genuinely help these women to me it just seems like you're watching these guys do you know like a like a gymnastics pass like round off back answering back flip it's like performative like look how smart i am look how look i stuck this landing and i think of like i guess i think of uh what's his name john doyle very smart but like his when he speaks it's very much like look at me um i don't think he's trying to connect with these women or make their lives better he's just trying to be right and and like of course that's an ego thing that i feel like men sometimes more have than women but I just don't think, yes, it makes for great content, but I, um, I would love to see like more connection, I think on this podcast. Yeah. Like, and I, I uh, went into it, not looking for approval from either the girls at the table or from the host even, or from the chat. And it ended up being that a lot of the people in the comment section, although a lot of them had like positive things to say about me, a lot of the men in the comment section were like, oh, this isn't like the content that I'm used to from whatever. This girl is trying to hold men to a certain standard and that's not fair because women aren't keeping up their end of the deal and blah, blah, blah. You know, Mary's taking this too far. 
you know, she has totally unrealistic expectations of men and like, I don't care what she says. I'm not waiting until marriage for any, uh, any of these hoes. Like, <laughs> but it, it's just like, that's not a constructive point of view. And we're never going to get out of this mess if we don't take personal accountability first and stop shitting on the other gender, whether you're male or female, like that is not going to solve the problem. Yeah, I'm going to play a little bit of like John Doyle. I think John Doyle's great. Uh, He's a buddy. I just think like he makes for great content. I don't think that his goal is like he's trying to help anyone or like have a human connection. But I think he might be autistic. Like traditional marriage of two young people as or compared it to a woman selling her sexuality. Oh, this is when you were calling out destiny for comparing. Wasn't he comparing marriage to kind of prosecution in a sense? Traditional marriage specifically Uh in a negative light Uh by uh, basically calling it a form of prostitution or or slavery. I don't know why this guy is like tweaking on the other side of me. (laughs) I think he was getting excited like you're making good points. There was no virtue signaling. What are you talking about? I said it's a sexual fantasy. I get off. I to someone who has a girlfriend or me having a boyfriend it's actually rarely me having a boyfriend and me cheat again this is like this is just she's performing i just like i want to know yeah i guess she was she was explaining that she has a sexual fetish for cheating and then said well but my fetish doesn't hurt anyone so you have no right to speak on it but i was like by definition, if your fetish is infidelity, you are hurting other people's relationships. Yeah, I think Therefore, it's a code. I think it's a defense mechanism. It's like I'll I'm gonna hurt myself before someone else can hurt me, or I'm gonna like exactly I'll like do, beat them I'll to the punch. Cheating before I can get cheated on. Yeah, and look how miserable this girl is. Oh my god. I'm yeah, sorry. I I want to like find her a uh, moment where she got like kicked out. Oh yeah, or she gets up and leaves. There. She harumphs. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Was this it? That were not the Sean. case to go back. I think to, like, Brian the wants you to end your little soy rant. No, 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 no was, soy rant. Everything, that rant, that everything rant was soy you have free. said. You called it a soy <laughs> rant because he was making good. That rant was no, 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 no. Everything. Marriage. Yeah. So the genie is out of the bottle. I mean, and I wonder if there's a little individuals. I mean, play individuals play. can make whatever choices they want. And no, you no. Know, if you've it's had premarital sex, up. that doesn't uh, prevent you from making the choice to wait with a certain person. Oh, his Jessica. girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> who doesn't have lip hey, This injections. jumps around a lot. This is Nicolette. like the best of. Why? Explain themselves. Yeah. And I'm oh. complaining about how women are having to explain themselves I'm asked- constantly. Oh, yeah. I think that is about kind to leave. of like dumb. Someone has a. But also is driving five hours from Washington to be on this podcast. Oh, Did she shame you for traveling a distance to get to get on the podcast? It's really embarrassing that you like took a flight to go to a different place than the place where you live. How, I was like, how sad for you Damn, that you, you really to got me here. there. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, <laughs> she just doesn't know what to say, and she feels like here, right? fly yeah. here, whatever for work. Well, this is my job. Work. This is a, wow. What what respect I have for you. Bro, okay. Oh, was that why are you known? shaking, bro? Okay. <laughs> you're literally like, okay. chill out. I don't know why you're so angry. Oh, she's so triggered. Me. Yeah, Maybe I'm just bored, and I've been sitting here for you can like. Leave, well, like you want to leave? Hours? You Any can leave. Time? Get up. Leave. Okay. You can leave. You can leave. <laughs> Are you religious? Or are you Christian? You're a Christian. I'm Catholic. Yeah. Catholic. Okay. I mean, that's certainly. That was cool. And you, at what point, um, during the the packets, like, do you come and say outright, like, all right, wait, first of all, are you a virgin? Is that like something yes. you talk about? Okay. Sorry if I'm like, getting too personal. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a very cool that. thing. That's a very cool thing to be uh public about because it's again like women need more examples of women like yourself who are like totally not only are you saving it for someone you like or marriage or just someone good um but that it's you ha- you're totally confident about it and there's nothing wrong with it in fact like that's that's the way to be um because i think it's just a, a lot of women are i mean if i could do it all over again like yeah i i definitely didn't need to sleep with all the people i slept with like it but you you know what i mean sometimes a guy buys you a large Greek salad and you don't know how else to thank him. 
Uh, but no, I think that's great that you were out about that. Did anybody give you any shit or like, I, you're so cool, calm, collected. Every clip I've seen you on this podcast and on your own podcast. I, I, like, are you triggered by anything? Was there anything that you felt like got your emotions up that they said? I, I don't know. I think I went into it expecting pushback and I'm not afraid of confrontation. And that's something that actually makes me like different or like defective in a way as a woman because women are highly agreeable and they don't like confrontation i'm not as averse to it i, I wasn't really triggered by anything they said if they want to shame me for being a virgin or, or whatever they want to shame me for that's fine but i'm confident in my own decision and it would be one thing if i were hypocritically coming at this uh as someone with a like a sexual history and i was telling other people to you know, stay virgins until marriage, but I'm more confident in it because I'm living it out. And I'm not trying to tell anyone that, you know, you're devalued or you're worthless because you haven't made this decision. I'm just like offering a different perspective because so few women, especially women my age, have even been presented with that as an option. Like a lot of their parents aren't even presenting this as like an option. Like, no, you don't have to like give your intimacy to anyone who doesn't care for you or treat you right. So, I mean, if I guess if their dads aren't going to tell them, someone has to. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? so great. Like nobody even gave, neither parent gave me the talk. And I wish I was presented with it as an option. Like, hey, like you're going to be pressured. Just know like you can just opt out. Like you can just not, you can just hold off a few years. Um, but you, I very much grew up feeling like pressured. Like, oh, not only <laughs> is it not a virtue to wait, but like you should do, you should do things so that whatever guy likes you, likes you even more. You know what I mean? It was never like, oh, I want this or, I mean, you're not missing out on anything. Like so much of the sex was bad and like, you don't even get off and the guy doesn't even care about getting you off. So it's like, you're not missing out on anything. I just think you're just great. Um, let's go to some super chats. David Lowe. Chrissy, do you personally prefer the blow up a plane joke or the when as takes off his shirt joke? Oh. Um, I still love that Basha KLE joke. That was, that was a high point for me. Thank you, David Lowe. Ooh, a couple more. Jim Satala, you need to get Mary connected with the compound Anthony with the compound. Anthony was really raving about her the other day. She should have him on the culture war podcast and she should do tax. Congrats to you and Frank. Thank you, Jim. Oh yeah. Um, Anthony Kumi is the best. You should, I'll connect you guys if you're interested. Um, yeah. Andrew Jacobs, the rad trad cath is back. Thank you, Andrew. Philip Vecchio, your mom, your mom goes to college. I loved Napoleon Dynamite. I saw it like four or five times. Um, that's very cool. I like that you, uh, don't shy from confrontation. Uh, I think that just speaks to your high self-worth. It all goes together. Cause if you have high self-worth, you're not going to be, uh, making decisions based off wanting to be liked, which I think a lot of women are making their sexual decisions, whether to do or not do something. Usually it's doing it because they don't like themselves and they need that outside validation. So yeah. I yeah. Like I think it, a lot of them turn to sex to like simulate a feeling of closeness and like being treasured by a guy. But like the reality of it, ugly or not, is that male sexuality is different from female sexuality. And um, if you really want a guy to regard you as a whole person and get to know you, you need to at least delay that like you need to delay having sex with him, whether you decide that it's going to be marriage or some other milestone of some sort in your relationship there's got to be like some delay because once you have sex outside of marriage or like a real commitment and i as a catholic believe that marriage is the only real commitment because all the rest of it is just you know what someone says to you which can be taken back um once once you do that the communication really stops you're and so I'm glad right. that I, i'm glad i went into this um all of these discussions being in a relationship um like i don't want to get into my relationship too much just because my boyfriend is a private person and he's not like putting himself out there the way that i do 
but um, I'm glad that I went into it already being in a relationship because the ultimate like own that they could throw at me is like, oh yeah, well, how's that working out for you? You don't have a guy who's willing to wait for you, but like I do. And it's actually like something I really treasure having found a connection like that. And he, because he like sees me as a whole person, doesn't mind waiting at all. Yeah. I feel you on all of that. I was raised Methodist, but Frank and I got married through the Catholic church. And in order to do that, like you, like you have, he had to sign paperwork. Like I laugh because it's just like, it feels very like, Ooh, you got to jump through a lot of hoops. It's like, uh, like the comparison between like, and I went to a Catholic college, like I've been to mass a bunch, but like Catholics are like, yeah, it's like, it's just more of a religion to me. It's just more hardcore. They expect more of you, especially going through the process of like getting ready to be married in a Catholic church. It's like, it, it makes you kind of like, uh, value marriage. I, th I think way more than if we hadn't done it. And, um, they expect a lot of you and it makes you want to kind of like rise to that standard in return. And it, and it does feel like the, not that I, um, like look down at people who haven't been married in the Catholic church or whatever, but it does seem like the highest, most marriagey form of marriage. Like they really, they have, they had me, I feel like, cause I jumped through so many hoops. Like I want to do a good job. Like I want to nail it. Like it makes me excited to, uh, I guess be a good wife, make God happy and all that. And, uh, it, it does feel nice. Like having the support of like God in our relationship and, um, of course, we're making like we're making jokes like there's three of you in the relationship. It's you, your partner and God. And we were like threesome like it's, you know, it's corny, <laughs> like just making side jokes to each other throughout this nine hour class uh, with no lunch break. But um, I don't know where I was going with this tangent. I think I just respected the process very much. It was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. For Catholics, it's, it's a sacrament and it's something that you can't go back on. Like divorce is not an option. It's really just like you either have a valid marriage or you never had a valid marriage in the first place. So yeah, we, we like come at it from a perspective that's rare these days. And like the divorce rates are skyrocketing and a lot of people are getting into marriage without really uh, understanding what they're committing to. And it's lifelong. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, I don't understand people being like, oh, marriage is going to change you or people being scared of marriage or people being, uh, it's like, well, then don't do it. And also it's a, it's a process, you know, I don't know. I'm just, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. It, it feel it felt really nice. I just was like, oh, look at us. And then I was wondering, I was like, what it, <laughs> there's a part of the free Caden class like they talk about <laughs> sex and there's a part of it that I wish was widely known because of course Catholics are against birth control which I am very much against birth control because I was on it for one year when I was 21 or 22 right after I graduated college it made me feel insane and I just stopped taking it taking it I stopped taking it and then all the things that you were saying on the whatever podcast like what it, what it does to your body it, it confuses your body into thinking that you're pregnant it affects the the man that you choose um just like a whole host of problems that I'm shocked are not common knowledge but like in the in the pre canic class like they're talking about like yeah like get the app me measure your uh cycle like just no <laughs> like and then they're like you know when you're uh really fertile that's like your hand holding week or though that's that's your four days where you just watch tv go see friends i was like it was very cute and wholesome but at the same time I'm like why isn't this why are they teaching this in sex ed you know instead of having girls grow up like freaked the fuck out about their bodies thinking they could get pregnant at any time and then convincing women to be on birth control for 20 years which is insane and so bad for you yeah, I think my main point about contraception when I was on whatever is just that this is what people regard as like a magic fix that takes all of the risks out of a high risk activity, which is having sex with strangers or just people that you wouldn't even consider in a million years having a kid with. And it's taken a lot of the seriousness out of sex and uh you know, people don't regard it as sacred anymore, let alone important in any way. Um, 
so that's just like one of the factors in like this whole mess that we're in. Um, but I think that it's it's the root, it's the inconvenient like root of a lot of the problems we're facing between men and women right now. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. It takes away um, the stakes uh, and then you value your own intimacy so far less. And if you think about it, like, who do you think is going to be better in bed? Uh, the guy that's willing to have a kid with you or the guy that like doesn't want to see you again after tonight has no plans on calling you or texting you back. It's like everything is going to be better uh, if you're if you're choosing better guys. And girls, of course. Thank yeah. you, Ghost Crusaders. Mary is gorgeous. Well, guess uh, what? She's taken, you. Ghost. <laughs> Let me see. Was there anything else? Were there any other standout moments? Uh, oh, yeah. This is a compilation. So maybe. It is interesting to see Destiny and his wife together. Because they're definitely like, she's beautiful. And you are and you go, oh, well. I guess and he's like. like not so much. No, I yeah, I wish he would wear a darker a darker shirt until things improve on like on the body <laughs> side. But that's just me. I feel like when I'm getting a little big, I wear black until the situation improves. But um, yeah. Again, like if it works for them, it works for them. But I would say it, it's they're not. I wouldn't say it's working for them. And uh, you know what? If if it's working for them, I don't care. Stop promoting mm -hmm. it to everybody else and stop talking about it and publicizing your relationship. It's weird. Yeah. It is a little weird. Okay, let me see what else. I want to go. I like this redheaded girl. She's so kind of funny to You're me. Breaking up with the guy. You should get her on the pod. I should. I I'm fascinated by her. But they all yeah. live in California, don't they? I'm not sure where she lives. Who I mean, is this girl definitely... here? She looks like the school guidance counselor. Like, what? What was her <laughs> position? She looks like the HR. <laughs> like... For her, it was it was difficult to tell, but she definitely came in in good faith and like wanted to talk about the nuances. And she wasn't like nearly as toxic as uh, some of the other girls on the pod. So she was nice. Okay, but she's she's like older, obviously, and like coming from a perspective of like way longer relationship history um but yeah she was cool okay cool let me see possibly can, can be to another person can i respond and it, to him that is other white that relationship yeah. ends over and over again that does something to your brain so mm -hmm. that choice is definitely fine legit mm -hmm. but not universal you can i, I wouldn't right because it sounds like you were making an overall point about commitment and if you're always like if you don't commit to somebody you're always just in that first date stage like anybody can nail a first date a second date a third date but it's like who you really are is, is who comes out like a year plus into something um and it's just like if you're always in and out of relationships you're not working that muscle of compromise of getting to know somebody of sacrifice of you know the longer you're with somebody, if you're both present, the more each of you are going to call you out, call each other out on your shit, on your on your bad habits, on your on your patterns. It's like you can learn a lot about yourself just by staying with the same person. Yeah. A lot of the times when I criticize uh, living a promiscuous lifestyle, their refrain is like, oh, no, I only have sex with people when I'm in a relationship. But they're serial monogamists who have been in a thousand relationships. And my point was basically like, if you have sex with someone, that's the closest that you can possibly be to another human being. And if that relationship keeps getting cut off over and over and over again, your experience of commitment gets warped continually and it it does something to your brain it changes like your neural pathways probably like your reward centers get sh like changed for the worse um so like and, and this this girl here the italian girl with the mask on she was just like going on and on and blathering she was like speaking italian and english if that makes any sense like uh, why her whole, her whole thing was like well you can't make absolute statements about people like you can't say that one thing can work for everyone but the institution of marriage is literally the thing that has worked for everyone for all of human history i absolutely can make absolute and general statements about it 
Um, so mm-hmm. she just thought she's she's the exception to every rule you can imagine. <laughs> what? The girl who's not comfortable in her own skin is wearing a mask and a wig? <laughs> I can't believe to it. To be fair to her, she was saying that she doesn't want to lose her job or whatever so she, she oh. needed to like disguise okay. <laughs> she needed a disguise okay need, yeah i, I would need say it know. is a universal which is what we're arguing about yeah no yeah. i mean i mean that's like he, how the majority was... of cultures have been doing it Sorry, Women are what was your experience mary of this guy that you're sitting next to the suit guy uh he's definitely more of like the red pill side of things like he's in the red pill sphere he is one of those people that thinks uh like men should be allowed to cheat and like crap like that oh really okay it's yeah it's really just like content that's geared toward men and i believe sadly making the situation worse um kind of like blaming women for everything and uh, to be honest, he like came off a little bit weird. I don't think he like, I don't know. I don't think he knows how he comes off to other people because like if you walk in the room with like your expensive watch and your cool sunglasses and you got the suit on, it's not really like giving what it's supposed to be giving, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But Mary, it's how is everyone like, else going to know how successful he is if he doesn't right, wear a like, tiny watch? <laughs> how else are they going to know what a high value male he is? Yeah, um, yeah I he's coming from a perspective that's still like totally hedonist and amoral and a religious. And I don't think we even agree on much other than the criticisms that I have for women happen to overlap with some of the criticisms he has for women. He still believes that like we should be hedonists and not take sex seriously. And he has like a three digit body count, et cetera. Like, I don't respect that. And I don't think that's like a way that you would conduct yourself honorably as a man. I think, yeah, it sounds like his position. He wants to impress other guys and uh, yeah, it's gay, mon- right? mon- monetize his, his takes rather than help people. I think that's, yeah. And I also don't think that like when you, put a guy like this on, uh, you know, the based side of the table that anything he says is going to register with the women on the, the cringe side of the table. (laughs) Is that what they call it? (laughs) Well, not really, but you know how the podcast is structured. Like Uh one side of the table has the based people and the other side of the table has the cringe people that are wrong about everything. And there's no room for nuance. It's literally separated in that order. Um, not to like disparage the host Brian there, but like that is the way that he structures it. And that's like the way that he does his content and it works. It's working for him, obviously, but it doesn't show the whole side of the story. And I probably agree with that guy, that red pill guy on very little, but we're both like based ostensibly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the chat likes us. I don't care who the chat likes or dislikes. I'm just there to offer my perspective um yeah i'm 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 not really down with the whole red pill thing where like guys should be able to meander and do whatever they want and hook up with tons of women and it has no consequences for them i think that you know being promiscuous negatively affects anyone who's engaging that behavior regardless of whether you're male or female there are different effects yes because male and female sexuality is inherently different but on the whole like even if men are better at coping with that, like coping with having hundreds of sexual partners, you're still coping because that's something that hurt you. You know what I mean? Right. Like you still have to cope with it. You're just coping with it with a, an expensive watch and a blazer and, you know, a public <laughs> image that, you right. know, puts you above other men. It's interesting. It's like, who does the red pill like really help? And, uh, people like bring up Pearl a lot, which I, I don't, I don't have negative feelings towards Pearl. I, I think it's interesting. I always like to step back and be like, okay, I'll, does someone actually want to help people or are they, they doing it for like max content value, like, you know, make for the best clips and uh, get the most clicks or whatever. And it, I'm, cause I remember Kevin Samuels and I would like watch his content. Like, you, you know, before he died, I was like, this guy's really fascinating. Right. And RIP. And 
and I'm like, I, I guess if you do have a, a type of woman who is just delusional, like not, not, it seems like he would, he was trying to reach women who are just lack self-awareness, overly confident, selfish, not humble, not like basically in a position to be like a good wife or a good partner and kind of, I guess, humble them was what he wanted to do. But it's like, uh, is that the only way to do it is to just knock somebody like kneecap them like just be just be like oh you're fucking 35 you're worthless i'm like i'm just like i don't know if that's the best way to go i mean i you could consider that tough love it's definitely yeah I, to watch i i don't think that pearl's wrong about everything everyone can make a good point once in a while but um her audience is obviously like 99.999 male and they enjoy watching her dunk on other women this isn't content like no matter how much you try to convince me pearl's content is not for women and it's not helping women and i'm sure some people have like on the whole if, if you had to look at the red pill movement like there has been some like net positive effect if you're like helping men improve themselves and like you're encouraging them to like take accountability and you know work out and like you know get your bag king but like <laughs> I, just, I just feel like it's turned into uh this liberal feminism that's destroyed women but repackaged and rebranded for men and hmm, i'm sorry you're not gonna make it with if you think that if you're a man and you think that you can write off women you're not going to make it if you're a woman and you think you can write off all men you're not going to make it yeah and is it helpful to to generalize and be like well if i see one of these red red flags in a woman i'm out and it's like i just don't know that that works out in the real world yeah and like all of these red pill guys also think like i'm a high value man i should get a high value woman who's you know uh, literally like you could describe her as like this virgin wannabe housewife she wants 10 kids etc but like i've known these women uh, these women do exist still no matter how much they say it, that you know it's impossible to find them i know them and i you know i went to school with them i'm in like catholic community with women who fit this description exactly and they're beautiful and they're smart and they're like highly competent, but they're not interested in any guy who is like chronically online, hmm. who has a porn addiction, who has hundreds of, of past sexual partners. They're into, I'm sorry, but they're into earnest, dorky guys who share their values, who they met organically through like school or work or church or something like that. Yeah. They don't want anything to do with the manosphere red pill guys. So uh, this like image that he's selling or any of these other red pill guys are selling, it's not going to help you find that like perfect virgin trad wife that you're looking for. Yeah, it feels like the red pill is to single men what Lizzo is to single women. Like we're here to make yeah. you feel it's not your fault you're single because all men are trash or all women are trash when that doesn't. I, don't, I just don't think that helps in the real world. Like when I look at my friends, men and women who are single and, and genuinely want to find somebody, uh, all of these teachings uh, just seem irrelevant. And it just comes down to this is a nice person who wants to meet a nice girl. And how do we make that happen? I, yeah. I, I just don't think we make that happen by saying like, uh, well, if a woman went to college, you got to disregard or if she's over 35. Well she's basically dead <laughs> so no some of their points are valid like if if you find a woman who has like 10 baby daddies and like has tattoos all over her body like she probably has poor impulse control poor judgment and yeah you wouldn't want to marry her but like it that's just common like sense, though like guys know that you know right they they already know that and like i don't know i i feel like uh just like calling out red flags in the opposite sex is only going to make you resent the opposite sex and we can smell it like i 
I, I don't know. I just think like any marriageable guy or girl, they're finding each other just fine. It's it's the people with like some like horrible problem with them that are not finding someone, you know, and like, shouldn't the message just be like personal accountability? Like, that's why I'm trying to talk to other women. I'm not trying to talk to men. I could easily garner a male audience by shitting on other women, but I'm not interested mm -hmm. in doing that because it screams insecurity and it's not compassionate or loving or constructive. Yeah. Um, I could definitely like do the, the grift of shitting on other women, but that wouldn't help anybody. No. And it comes down to like, if you're a single person, your number one job is to like really figure out what your values are and like, what's important to you. Like what, uh, maybe, maybe it's not your job or the way you make money, but like what fires you up? Like what makes you mad? What do you really care about? Uh, what do you love doing in your free time? And then those things are going to point to those things are going to have something to do with your partner, like with the person you're meant to spend the rest of your life with and like what you want to build, what are your big goals? Um, yeah, I, I want to go back to something I just said. Uh -oh. Is your internet cutting out or is it just for me? Tell me in the chat if you can hear Mary okay. Oh, hold on. Remove. Putting back in. Oh, dear. We lost Mary. Mary, leave and then come back. Okay. Mary's cutting out. Okay. Mary, if you could hear me, leave and then come back. Okay. Okay. We'll go to some super chats. Do, do, do. He's also fat, according to Anna. Indoor. Oh, thank you, Jacob Rotten. Um, what was that in reference to one of the guys, JD, if Mary wants a good debate, talk to Rolo Tomasi. I know Rolo. I met him when I was in Vegas a couple months ago. Um, thank you for bringing him up. I got to get in touch with him about getting him on the show, but yeah, they would have a great discussion. Let's see if Mary's back. No, she's still blanked out. Yeah. Rolo. You know what? I'm putting Rolo on my board here. He seems like a a good dude. And a prolific author. Okay. He's on the board. Okay. Okay. Philip Vecchio. Husbands, uh, love your wife like Christ loves the church. Ooh, thank you. Good to know. All right. Mary's left. She'll come back. Joshua. Thanks for the super chat. I'm skipping Tim's after show to watch Mary, a national treasure. Uh, prove that she's wizened well beyond her years. Congrats on the wedding, on the marriage, Chrissy. Thank you, Joshua. She is wise beyond her years. I'm a big fan, if you couldn't tell. I'm very much a Mary simp. Okay, she's back. Hey, that must have been a problem on my end. Sorry, Aww. I live in the sticks. It's okay. I'm rereading this because uh, it's a compliment. It's from Josh. I'm skipping Tim's after show to watch Mary, a national treasure. Uh, prove that she's wizened beyond her years. And then he said, congrats on the marriage. Thank you, Josh. You are very wise beyond your years. Do you get that a lot, Mary? I do, but eventually I'm going to like turn a certain age where people stop saying that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I don't know what age that is going to be, but yeah. I've got they'll just before. say that you're wise and then they'll, they won't mention anything about your age. Uh, Jim, Satala, Mary and Seamus seem to have very similar views. It would make a great show for the two of them to tag team Ian on his hippy dippy gobbledygook. Uh, Mary, what does that mean? Is better than Ian. Who's Seamus? How's Seamus? Is he a Timcast person? Or who's Seamus? Yeah, Seamus is on Timcast sometimes. Um, okay. He's been in town recently. Yeah, he does like Shamer and um, Freedom Tunes. He's a political cartoonist. But yeah, we're both Catholic. I guess we're just like the two-person Catholic team at Timcast. Um, but like, I, I love Ian and I will not stand for any disparaging of Ian. He is one of my Ian favorite people. Great. And 
My favorite thing about Ian is that he is just like sincere almost to a fault. Like he can't stop being like so authentic and so sincere all the time. Yes. It's just, he like, always keeps it 100. Yeah. Everyone is so cynical these days and he's just like always in good faith and he's so like whimsical. It's weird. He really is. He keeps it light. He addresses things right away. I, I, yeah. uh, my respect for him grew so much when, uh, there was like the drama with Eliza blue and then a clip came out of them canoodling or flirting or whatever. And right away he was like, boom, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time big deal we flirted like he addressed it so truthfully and like he did, wasn't ashamed didn't give a fuck i was like good for you ian that's the way to be he's great he is so great um seamus you could easily get for the podcast thank you jeremy david someone also recommended um rollo tomasi for you mary who i did meet in vegas um i think i have his phone number i don't know much about him He's a he's a red pill manosphere guy. Okay. An, um, another person that you should get on the pod though, Chrissy, is um HRH collection. I think that would be hilarious. Brittany Vanny loves her. And I just thought that she was a um a jewelry designer. I didn't realize that she um she's so much more than that. She she oh contains God. multitudes. Um <laughs> okay. yeah. What a I, funny I name to go by. Like, it doesn't sound like, so obviously, it's not somebody's name, but like, well, it's, it's, her H -H -H name is Alex, but she just goes okay. by like the name of her brand. But you should like definitely okay. like do a deep dive into her YouTube channel. I've watched all of her videos and oh. she's just like, she's so opinionated and will just defend her views to the end. I, like, I love her. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, I'm definitely going to look into her. From Jacob Rotten, I mean the Endure guy from whatever. Anna called him fat, by the way. Congrats, Chrissy, on your marriage. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's yeah, very exciting. Guy, uh, the guy next to me was saying Endure when we were on with um, Destiny because his wife was oh. like, well, what if someone is in a marriage where they're like getting abused or like it's a toxic situation? What if there are children involved, et cetera? And he was like, indoor, indoor. And the rest of us were like not saying anything because we didn't agree with him. And it turned into this whole thing where like people claimed that I was like agreeing with him and cheering it on, which wow. I totally wasn't. Oh God. That's very, it's very hard to give advice for um, a, a very complicated hypothetical situation. like the one that they were talking about what if there's abuse it's like okay well like again it you really can't uh i think the answer i mean he instead of saying endure i think he should have said like go to a therapist together like go to couples therapy or like what kind of abuse i mean it's again that's very personal to get into yeah uh, Destiny is just like very bad faith and wanted to claim afterwards that i like hate abuse victims and i was like not sure where you got that from. That's so but, leftist. Like, yeah. Oh, you're a bad person. Uh, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> your whole argument is moot. Yeah. Uh, middle maggot. How did Tim Pool find you, Mary? Great convo. Oh, yes. This was. I was going to ask you this question. I forgot. Yeah. Um. I was kind of active on like TikTok, and I've since been banned. But I banned was, like, writing Why? about pop culture. I I I was banned for. Honestly, I couldn't tell you which community guideline I broke. I think I just got like mass reported by a bunch of people who got mad at me and it Were doesn't they Malaysian? matter what it, it <laughs> No, they weren't Malaysian. But um it's just like it doesn't matter what you post on TikTok. If you get mass reported, they're going to ban you, period. So, I don't know if I'm ever no. going to be back on that platform. But anyway, um yeah, I had met uh, Cassandra through politics in the past, like before COVID happened. And then she recommended me for the role because they were looking for a co-host for Pop Culture Crisis. And uh, I visited and we kind of hit it off. So wow. very well, serendipitous. Well, you're just perfect. And perfect for Middle that. Middle MAGA, it's we're so having good. on Pop Culture Crisis this week. So excited to meet you, Middle MAGA. Ooh, Okay everybody tune in and i really love the way like your channel like they you're very good like you do all the shorts which like i have not really embarked on doing shorts yet um i should i should really get into that 
Yeah, that it. would help you channel for sure. Yeah, what, what I gotta do? I gotta do little snippets. That's what I'll do. Anytime I say something funny, guys, give me a timestamp and I'll cut it into a short. Because we have such short attention spans that that's like what does well on YouTube now. Oh yeah, I mean the whatever podcast is a perfect example of like they're they're all clips. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Clippy based. Um, were there any other good moments of all your whatever appearances that you wanted to touch on? Um, I'm not going to go through this whole clip because I, didn't I don't know. That. I think we kind of like looked at everything that was worth worth watching because most of it, it like if you're sitting there for like four or five hours and it's all oh. just like debating about dating culture and men and women and feminism and blah, blah, blah. You just end up feeling like your entire body is burning and you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to change anybody's mind in four hours. Like at best no. you can plant a seed if you are uh, in good faith <laughs> and you're, you're, you know, you'd rather, and that's the thing. If you want to go into that situation, would you rather be right? Or do you want to like plant a seed and understand human beings who yeah. have a different life experience than you? So Four I applaud hours you. Five for hours it. is a long time to sit in one place and talk about one thing. And those chairs don't look comfortable. Yeah. They're not. They're not comfy. Uh, Elsa Barrett, Mary, never stop. Always not stopping. I mean that. I will never stop <laughs> not stopping. Thank you. You could have just said keep going. Um, but thank you, Elsa. <laughs> My God, Mary, the time has flown by. Um, I'm going to have to have you back. I'm going to have to have you on Simpcast if you're yeah. free uh, on a Sunday evening sometime. And uh, you're just the best. I'm a big fan. Uh, other than Thank having you. folks follow you on Twitter and Instagram at Mary Archived, uh, where else can they follow you? And when can they watch? When is Pop Culture Crisis? Yeah, so we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern every Monday through Friday. We're always on the grind uh, talking about the celebrities, the movies, TV shows, everything pop culture. I think tomorrow we're definitely going to get into Demi Lovato's new song about abortion, mourning the loss of Roe v. Wade. That's oh, definitely wow. going to be a big topic tomorrow. I heard he's like not non-binary anymore. I heard she's back to being regular. Yeah, I think she said that it was just too exhausting to correct people on the pronouns at one point, and she gave up. So It's too exhausting to live your life that way. Be honest, Demi. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that's where you can watch me on Pop Culture Crisis. And, yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Mary Archived. That's about all I have to plug for today. I love it, Mary. I'm such a fan. Thank you for coming on. Oh, we have one more Super Chat yeah, that's snuck in. Me. Uh, Soren Mask, Mary, what can we do to persuade you to capitalize and properly punctuate your tweets on Twitter? I will never. It's not, I'm not some buttoned up professional. I will never take Twitter seriously, which is why I get to enjoy it. Yeah. If you came here looking for grammar, okay, you're, you're in the wrong place. Yeah, this is the wrong place. <laughs> Um, thank you to the chat for your comments and good questions. And, uh, oh, and chatting esque wants to know when I turn 30. Well, it's, you know, it's such a long way from now. You guys are the best. We'll see you next time. Follow Mary, watch her on Bye. Pop Culture Crisis, and we'll see you.